Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I just thank and praise God for tonight. I just thank and praise God for all the saints that's here tonight. I thank and praise God um, for my pastor, Pastor Barry Jones Sr., for my elect lady. I thank um, God for just allowing me the opportunity to come before God's people. Um, it, it's a privilege and it's an honor, and I thank and praise God for that. Um, I thank and praise God for my auntie that's here tonight that came out to support me. Thank you, Auntie, for being here. I really appreciate you. My Auntie Teresa A.G., Sister Teresa A.G., and my little cousin. Hey, thank you for coming. <laughs> I just thank and praise God for being here. Thank you, Mommy God. I thank and praise God for being here. Um, I'm not going to prolong the time. Um, my topic is, first I'm going to pray over it, because, Lord, I need your help, Lord. So I'm going to pray over the word, Lord God. I thank you right now, Lord God, for your word, God. Lord God, you said in your word that it was hidden in, oh God, that it was hidden in heaven, Lord God. That it was settled in heaven, Lord God. Lord God, you said hide the word in our hearts so that we may not sin against you, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that you have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Lord God, let this word reach somebody, God. Lord God, let this word touch somebody. Hallelujah, God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God, I just thank you for your word, God. God. Lord God, have your way, God. I ask that I decrease and you increase, Lord God. Just as you told Jeremiah, God, that you would touch his mouth, God, and you would put the words in his mouth. Oh, God, I ask that you would put the words in my mouth just as you put the words in Jeremiah's mouth, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited on tonight. Oh, God. Just as they sung that song just about praising the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I came to shout for joy. I came to tell somebody about Jesus on tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My topic is, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? That's my topic on tonight. If you will, please turn with me to Matthew 11, 1 through 6. Come on. Matthew 11, 1 through 6. When you have it, please say amen. 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 And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he, de he departed then to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto him, Unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And I just want to go from that passage where he said, John the Baptist sent his two disciples unto him. He was to Jesus. He was in the prison. He was locked up. King Herod, who was also named as Herod the Great, he had him put in the prison because he had rebuked him. He um, showed him his sin. He showed him his error because he married. Um, her name was Herodotus, um, his um, brother's wife. He married her. And John told him, look, you wrong. I'm sorry, but you know, the king got mad because you can, look, hey, he's the leader. He don't want you to tell him nothing that he's doing wrong. He don't want to hear the truth. But John rebuked him anyway, so he threw him in jail for marrying his brother's wife. John told him, it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. And he got angry and threw him in the prison. So while John was in jail, he sent the disciples to ask him. In verse 2, it says, he said to go. And ask him, should, is, is it you that, what is it? Go, wait a minute, and said unto him, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto them, go and show John again those things which you do. Some people even thought that John the Baptist was the Messiah. How many of you know that people were questioning him? They thought that he was the Messiah. If you will, please turn with me to John 1, 19 through 37. The Gospel of John 1, 19, 19 through 27. Mm -hmm. 
And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are thou Elias? And he said, I am not, which is Elias is Elijah. He said, I am not. Art thou, not, art thou that prophet? He answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as he as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, why baptize thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who cometh after me, who is preferred before me, whose shoes latched I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethbarah beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John see Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. I knew him not. A lot of Bible scholars, they um, said, well, when he was in prison, the reason why he sent him is because John wanted to know what that him. It was so many people perpetrating and, you know, and, 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 and doing things to make themselves appear to be the Christ. So John wanted to be sure he had disciples that he had baptized that were following him. So he wanted to be sure that those were, uh, that that was Jesus, the man that he had baptized in the Jordan River. He wanted to be sure. And a lot of Bible scholars just believed that that was it. And it was some that believed that John began to fear and fret when he was in prison, that he got weary. You know, he began to doubt. Some people believe that. Some Bible scholars believe that John got weary. You know, while he was in prison, he was fretting. He began to doubt that um, Jesus was the Christ. Even though he baptized him, he, he began to get weary. Tell somebody tonight, you can stop looking. Stop Tell them to stop looking. Say, you can stop looking because Jesus is the Lamb of God. He said, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, God. John said, I came to bear witness of that light. How many of you know we are saints that we have to bear witness of the light of Jesus Christ? Matthew 5 and 14 says, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be, be hid. He, it, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know, we also have to have good works. Jesus explained um, when he told them, he said, Go and tell John of the works that I do. He said, My works testify of itself. He said, Go and tell him how the blind eyes are open, how the deaf ears are open, you know, how he healed the sick. He said, Go and tell him those are the works of Jesus. We also, too, have have to testify our light have to shine we supposed to be a light in this dark and evil world yeah. our words should speak of us what i thought about was you know how sometimes you do things in the world that you're not happy about like pastor jay said some things you just gotta take to the grave those things like the bible says some of those things we just ashamed of yeah. you know when you think back on some of the things that you did you like lord forgive me i was a mess Lord, I was a mess, and you don't even want to tell nobody sometimes the things that you did because it'll come back. I always tell my children what you do in your life. People don't remember the good things, but they'll remember the bad, and sometimes come back to hunt you. So your work will, you know, speak for itself. But like Jesus said, you know, our works will testify. His works testify of him. And I thank and praise God. It's our good work, our love we have one to another. How we honor our pastor and our elect lady. How we um, treat one another. You know, how we give one another. How we pray for the saints. How we pray for the sinners. You know, our work, how we go out into the harvest. You know, those are the work that we do. If you will, please turn with me to, um, well, 
Yeah, Matthew, verse 15. Matthew 11, 15 through 24. Matthew 11, 15 through 24. The Bible tells us, he that have ear to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the market and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath the devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they said, Behold, a, glut a gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. How many of you know tonight that people talked about Jesus? No matter what good works he did, people still had something to say about him. They still talked about him. He was doing so many wonders in the earth, and people still found something to talk about. I don't care what you do, somebody still going to find something to talk about. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. They repented not. No matter what he did, that still did not cause them to repent. They wouldn't turn from their ways. And it says, woe unto thee. You know, woe means like you ain't got nothing. Like, whoa. Hey, whoa. Woe unto you. When you can't think of nothing, you're like, whoa. Hey, hold on now. That's right. <laughs> woe unto thee, Corrosion. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sedan, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sedan at the day of judgment than for you. And thou Capernaum, he said, I ain't leaving you out. I ain't leaving you out. And thou Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would be remained until this day. You know, Sodom was was um, burned up. You know, he told Lot to go. White, Lot, wife, look back. Anybody know that story? But he said that if um, the mighty works had been done upon in, in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. He said it should be more tolerable. So many, so many people just don't want to repent. When we tell them that John, he told them, he sent them out by two. He sent them out and he told them, he said, preach repentance. People don't want to hear you tell them to repent. People don't want to hear you tell them to turn from your wicked ways. People don't want to hear that today. Oh, God, they don't want to hear that. He said, but woe unto you. Woe, woe unto you. You don't want to repent. You don't want to come up out of your sins. You don't want to come up out of your mess. But I have, you know, I had to do it. Everybody else in here had to do it. You don't have to do it. You got to come up out of your mess. Romans, 4, Romans 2 and 4 tells us the goodness of the Lord leading one to repentance. I'm always hearing people say, well, God did this for me. And God did that for me. But if he did it for you, why haven't you changed? Why haven't you said, give your life to the Lord? You know that you could have died in that car wreck. You know that you could have died when you hit that crack pipe and it didn't bust your heart. And you'll tell people, oh, I was so hot last night. But, and, I, and I know I could have died. People in an overdose, and they still here. They still putting the needle in their arm. And then they want to say, I know I, I, I could have died. They waking up in the emergency room. But they still don't want to change. They don't want to give their life over to the Lord. They don't want to change because they rather hold on to the world. There's so many things that happen to people, people will say, well, you should have seen that car that I was in. People ask me, how did I make it? How did you make it out? And then you'll hear people come on the knees saying, well, it must have been some high power. It must have been luck. It must have been this. It must don't even want to give glory to God. Too scared to let it come out of their mouth thinking it's going to get cut out. Please. Thinking they're going to bleep on them. Because they don't want to say the name of Jesus. What's wrong with saying the name of Jesus? Tell somebody, don't look for another. Don't look for another. Don't look for another. Don't look for another. Yes. If you will, please turn with me to Exodus 32, 1 through 10.
Exodus 32, 1 through 10. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as, for as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we were not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears of your wives of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. And the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. The people, the children of Israel got tired of waiting on Moses when he went up to um, stand before God. He, they got tired. And that's how some people do. They, You know, sometimes they get tired of waiting. You know, we start singing so I, I don't mind waiting. But they got tired of waiting. So then they wanted to, um, they went to Aaron. And he received them it says, and all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it, made it a molten calf. And they said, these be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now look at them. Like I said, people be wanting to give the glory to somebody else. They said, these be thy God. Eric said, these be thy God. That brought. Everybody know, anybody that read the Bible know that, that, that he ain't had nothing to do with that. And that golden calf didn't have nothing to do with bringing the children of Israel out of there. Do you hear me? We God. That he ain't had nothing to do with We serve a God that's not made with hands. That golden calf ain't had nothing to do with it. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out.